cars, cars, classic car, supercar, barn find, restoration, fix it, repair it, will it ever run, build, and any other YouTube car trope you can think of, it's all right here. And I'm on the move, and I'm bringing some pipe with me. 32mm OD aluminium with a 1.6 wall. This is the raw stuff for a 1978 Lotus Esprit through chassis coolant pipes. Watch as I waste time and money trying to bend it like a big ham. There's a big parts drop too, and the chassis starts to get exciting. Here we go. On the first day of coolant pipes, we tried to bend the old aluminium pipes without so much as a how do you do. This is our attempt on the second day. See, I didn't want to flick my dollar books at new pipe work until I had done some test bends first. So I brought my crappy plumber's torch with me to Delvo Engineering, where the boys allowed me pull the pipe bender out of the back room and make a second attempt. We know exactly how to use the pipe bender. Having listened to you, the great font of all knowledge and your ramblings, I mean comments, I pre-packed the tube with sand. Well, you'll never guess what. Yes, it didn't work at all. This is almost as ripply as my abs. <laughs> so having listened to you another time, I marked the tube with a sharpie. The idea being that as the marks burn off, you know you're approaching adequate heat. Turns out a plumber's torch isn't strong enough to burn off Sharpie. But guess what? We did manage to get a fairly usable bend third time round. So with my balls all pumped, that's a football thing, I'm not sure what you're thinking. I pulled the trigger on the fresh new aluminium you saw on top of the car. Here's what happened on the third day of coolant pipe. <laughs> Coolant pipe home build is so far an inverse success. It's a negative win. I'm moving on to the smaller set of pipes because they're straight and all they need is to be cut to length and have a bead rolled in the ends so that hoses don't slip off. And there are many videos out there showing how to make a small bead rolling tool for pipe. So it must be really simple.
No, it's not flipping easy at all. It's not rocket science, but my first mistake is using a long handle pliers. There's too much flex in the handle, so the force is all lost before it gets to the beading head. I can get it to press a bead into the pipe by closing the pliers jaws in the vise, but it's awkward, so the bead is uneven. The coolant pipe fabrication is an all round fail. It's a hollow victory. I got the shaft. These are pipe dreams. Do you want me to stop? This is an anti-roll bar that I saw for sale for so reasonable a price, I had to take a punt on it. It's been here for years now, and genuinely I've never opened it, so here goes. When I asked why it was up for grabs, the seller told me he'd had it stripped and plated, but it wasn't good enough for his car. Maybe it was the pitting, maybe it was the grinder gouge in one end, or maybe like me, he had wondered if the plating process would affect the torsion of the bar. Maybe it was all the above. This video is just full of joy so far, isn't it? Still, it's a spare anti-roll bar. I'll clean up my original one and use them both to destruction. Remember the gear shift rods from last time? No you don't, because you didn't watch the last video, did you? Arr. They're fully drilled out now. They're actually lighter than carbon fiber. Very special. And no, you can't have a feel. They're gonna get paint along with everything else, except for the one that was in such nice original condition that I left it alone. Yeah, I'm weird. The multiple plates, by the way, are reinforcements for the seats in the Sprinter camper conversion I'm working on behind the scenes. I am now desperate to get any little job done while failures beset the project on all sides. These are the very expensive rear wheel bearings. Thank you Lotus for using roller skates from a car that was never going to generate a healthy aftermarket part supply. I've read that if you heat the aluminium rear hub castings and freeze the bearings, they'll nigh on slide into the hubs. So the bearings have been in the freezer for weeks and the hubs on the dash of the car in the summer sun for about an hour were actually too hot to hold for more than a second or two. But slide in, they did not. Next job. So here's my parts haul. Clutch hose, brake hoses, spring seats, bearing seals, brake line grommets, coolant pipe grommets, gear linkage bushes, a who's who of suspension and running gear nuts and bolts, and a full set of springs. Uh, get in. First up, get the grommets into the chassis for the brake line and clutch hose. These parts from PNM are full of nice little surprises. This is the original red plastic clutch hose. Yes, plastic. When this pipe would heat up in the engine bay, it would expand and the driver wouldn't be able to select a gear. All the force was being lost, like a homemade pipe bead tool. Good aftermarket clutch pipes for an esprit all have braided steel outers to combat the heat induced problem, but the PNM parts one has a bright red coating on it so that it tips the hat to the original. It's a lovely touch 
and it's given my chassis a splash of color that makes me swing. The gear linkage pushes are firmer than the originals, but not solid like some kits. That's because the solid mount kits are said to transfer too much harshness and vibration, and each pair of these bushes interlocks as well. It's time for the ARB bushes. They have to be squeezed onto each end of the anti-roll bar and then slid into position, but they're extremely tight. So the method is to heat them in hot water and then use dish soap to lubricate their path along the ARB. Oh look, four candles. Now I can confidently say that the next time I'll be bolting suspension to the chassis. Just having the parts on the deck is a great feeling. Things could come together pretty quick now, all going well. If you noticed old fasteners going on in places, that's because their weird size is not easily found, or should I say, not quickly found. All will be righted in time, chosen one. To my patrons Rod Tobman, Todd Graziano, Chris Eli, One Uga, Richard Williams, Nigel Blake, Klaas Rolofsson, Matthew Weinel, Timothy Eves and Mark Arnold and to all my supporters who are the only reason I'm able to keep doing this, thank you. If you'd like to lend a hand, follow the link below to my web and see what's what. Yours in excitement for next time. Until then, stay stuck in and good luck.